what was your name in the state? Don't you know there's no X's in Bates? Did you rob a rich bloke or is that- No wonder everyone's confused. Over the past four years, I've been searching for an answer, as if somewhere down the line, I'll stumble across something or someone with that one definition, that one solution, that will make all this chaos turn to order. No, what was your name in the state? Awesome. <laughs> Oh gosh, it means to have come from a whole bunch of different backgrounds. To identify with two different nationalities. When a person self-identifies as um, being composed of different racial backgrounds, it generally means that they have parents or, you know, close relatives of uh, distinct racial or ethnic backgrounds. Different parents from different, like, heritages or different ethnicities. More than one race. Racially, culturally, economically, uh, mix is a very vague term. Biracial or triracial is <laughs> having a lot of different identities. I think that word is different for different people. I'm considered mixed because I have a lot of heritage from other countries. I don't really think about that during a normal day. And other people are more in the forefront of their mind. When someone is born who has different parents from different races and backgrounds and ethnicities. Mix is just generally a mixture of anything. Blending and combining two cultures together and just identifying yourself through those two mixtures or multiple mixtures. You'll be from uh, parents from like Germany and England instead of just all from Germany. To identify yourself in multiple layers. Happen next. Um... Pretty much two or more. Just to have a little bit of something different in you, you'll be mixed. Can I um, change one of them? Yeah. The mixed one. I would consider everybody mixed. If you're not talking about just race, then everybody comes from a combination of various uh, backgrounds and cultures. If you want to be, if you want to call yourself mixed, just because you're a quarter Asian or one eighth Irish, you can do that if you want. You don't have to be half and half, but you gotta be like equal. Like, if you're. Wait, no, I can't. No, I can't say that. <laughs> at least more than one race, at least. I don't think that there's really a basis of being mixed. If you have two parents who are from anywhere, any different nationalities, I think that qualifies you as being a mixed individual. <laughs> I think almost everybody is mixed. Um, my parents from different sides of the county, I believe that's mixed enough. I think that that really depends on how a person self-identifies. It's not the one drop thing, it's like... I don't know how to say it. It's okay. Michelle, I don't know how to say it. No, that's perfect. <laughs> Let's try multiracial. Multiracial. Of, pertaining to, or representing more than one race. But how do we define race? Race. A noun. A contest of speed is in running, riding, driving, or sailing. Races, a series of races, usually of horses are... All right, all right, no. Try again. Noun. A group of persons related by common descent or heredity. A population so related, anthropologically there's, I mean, there's this one, but it's no longer in technical use. So, moving on. An arbitrary classification of modern humans. Wait, arbitrary? Let's look at that. Based on random choice or personal whim, rather than any reason or system? Well, I'm glad someone agrees with me, but I guess we have to go back to race. This one seems pretty definitive, until you factor in the racially ambiguous, those with two, three, four races involved. What do their genetics say? But wait, there's more. Look at all of these. They're all considered races of their own right. Fish, journalists, wine, what's going on? The lines we draw with one definition contradict the lines we draw with another. How can we be expected to check one or keep track of race at all when there are so many ways we interpret it day by day? They, um, I actually have no idea what they do with that. They probably don't even, I don't know what they do with it. 
They're gone into the other category. It's accurate. I have no idea. It kind of, I guess, skews the data from what has already been established, um, where individual communities can really be specified. But when people start to like mix and you know check multiple boxes, you don't really get those clear-cut dividing lines. I think they're just trying to identify with who they are and that may mean checking more than one box. Most of the time the boxes classify you as one solid thing when you could be multiple things. I don't know. Yeah, that's, um, a lot of a lot of surveys I think don't even like give you the opportunity to check um, more than one box. They <laughs> don't want to deal with like calculating what that means. I think it's important that people have the opportunity to check more than one box. At least, you know, say, I don't fit into this specific category because a lot of people don't. Well, I think society has a big influence on that. Many people might look at you wondering what you're doing, trying to challenge the, the, the norms of society. That just means that they associate themselves with different, um, <clears throat> different races, but then it creates a lot of confusion, I think, for other people. If, it's a, if you're talking like beard back, we have no idea. I have a friend who's half white, half Korean. Her Korean mom always tells her, check white, you'll be like, you'll be part of the majority. Her dad, who's white, always tells her to check Korean, or like Asians, you get more benefits as a minority. So to be honest, I have no idea what it means to like check off different things, and it's frustrating. One of the biggest problems is a lack of consensus. The Department of Education classifies me as a Hispanic, no matter how many other boxes I check. The National Center for Health Statistics says I'm Asian. Contradictions abound, mixed citizens disprove and dismantle our historical racial categories. How much does it really even matter? I asked fellow students at the University of Maryland a very simple question. What do I look like? Hispanic because of her eyebrows, her eyes, and mouth nose structure. You look white because of your nose. I thought you were Hispanic because you have really dark hair and your skin is tan. When I met you, you looked Asian because of your skin. Hispanic because you have dark eyes, dark hair, and you're slightly tan. And you're not Asian. Asian because of her eyes. Or Hispanic because of your brown eyes, your brown hair and your in-between skin color. But your skin tone was fair enough, so I thought you were a mix. Your hair looked a little like more Hispanic-ish. You look Native American because of your hair. Your hair and your, your lips, I would say Mediterranean. You look non-white because of your lips. Hispanic would be the word that I would use, the sort of golden tint of your skin. She almost has that whole like, kind of looks Hispanic, but I know she's not full Hispanic. You look white <laughs> because you have freckles. Let's be real. We can't cover everything we need to in 10 minutes. We have to go a lot deeper. The point is, we have a problem. And to fight it, we need to understand it. There's definitely a lot to gain. People usually go based on what they see. And so if they can't quickly identify you, they don't know how to interact with you. Like you challenge their idea of, of what it means, what it means to be a part of their culture. Many people will want to put you into a category of, of one thing. People don't want to be labeled or categorized. It, it kind of eliminates the individuality and focuses on the representation of an entire group. The world is made up of intersections and, and, uh, and just combinations. So I feel like the more you are at least aware of those combinations, um, then I feel like the more real you see the world. I couldn't have said it better myself.